see you. Dr. Dr. Faber. Faber. How do you do? Good to see you. And Mr. Weber. Yes. Yes. Well, Camille, I have been a permanent guest of German television during your stay in Peter's <laughs> Okay, another photo. so far as the projection of the, uh, the Duarte as the winner with a sizable majority and that's pleasing to us. Vice President, what's pleasing is that we had a successful, uh, they had a successful election and improved again the strides they've made toward the market. Is that a preview of the speech, Mr. Kennedy? Can you give us a little preview of the speech? <laughs> More aid? Two men. Uh, 
um, Zhang Xiaoping when we met, but he brought it up and I repeated to them as I had to Zhao earlier when he was here that this is a, an internal matter for them to settle between themselves. And we hope that it will be settled peacefully because if it isn't, that would cause some very great problems with our relationship. And um, that we did not throw away old friends in order to make new. And that just about ends it, except that he, on the way walking to lunch, told me the type of thing, settlement that he has in mind. I told him I sound, thought it sounded very interesting. Uh, that he pointed to Hong Kong. And he said that they would like to consider a, a relationship in which um, Taiwan would virtually have autonomy, be able to practice its present capitalist system and so forth. And uh, the only change would be that it would be a part of the sovereign territory of, hmm. of China. But the people. We claimed that we were broken. But the, the changes they've made, and one of the reasons that I'm, I think this trip is very worthwhile, is they are interested not in an alliance with us. And we made a claim that we respected and supported their idea of remaining non aligned. This was our own position. But that is the two greatest powers in the Pacific Basin, as friends, trading partners, and so forth, we could provide a stability that would be vitally important in what I think is the coming great area of the world out there in the, in the Pacific Basin. And they made it plain that they are interested in capital investment in that country. I don't know how many of you are aware of to show you how far they've come this incentive system whereby they now allow their people to, with the practices of capitalism, make uh, money on their own, even as to uh, starting small businesses. One family in China is making about $20,000 a year under this system. They bought an automobile. It is the only privately owned automobile in all of China. But the Chinese government is putting them on television, is doing everything to show to the Chinese people, look, work hard, save your money. You too can own an automobile. So uh, the meetings were, I think were most rewarded, most successful. And uh, we have come away with clean hands as far as Taiwan is concerned. But the, they have progressed so far that not only now are there partnerships, the day before we, or two days before we arrived there, ARCO signed a deal with them to make the biggest fertilizer plant in the world. And ARCO, they will be the partners with China, but ARCO will be 60% of the partnership. And now they've opened up some cities, particularly like Shanghai and along the coast, where no partnerships are required. An American or a foreign industry can come in there, set up a branch, and on its own. And we have worked out a, a taxing agreement to, so that to protect their people and ours against double taxation. And all in all, it was a trip that I, George, would you like to touch on some other?